What is going on everyone? My name is Under the Radar and welcome back to the second episode of this series that I'm doing with my good buddy Kyle A. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Kyle A. Thank you so much for having me on the video with you. We actually covered part one, which was the singles format over on my channel, but today over here we're going to be talking about doubles and we each have two pairs for you so we'll have um eight pokemon in total that you can use in doubles format to help you kick some ass in the battle tree and do what you need to do if you guys don't know what the bat what the doubles format is i'll do a quick little overview it's where you have two pokemon on the field battling at the same time as your opponent does but since you guys kind of sort of should know that if you're watching this video let's just go ahead and jump right into the first pair that i have for you the first pair that I have for you is actually a really unique pair, and that is the pair of Rybombi and Oricorio. These two mons work really well together because Oricorio has an ability called Dancer where it copies any dance move that is used on the field. Whenever you have it next to Rybombi with Quiver Dance, Rybombi is going to gain a plus one in its special attack, special defense, and speed, and because of Oricorio's ability, it is going to gain the exact same boost every single time you go for a Quiver Dance. Because of this, I think that having a Focus Sash on Rybombi is the best possible item with the ability Sweet Veil that prevents both of you from being able to put to sleep, which is always necessary. For the moves that you could go aside from Quiver Dance, I like to have Moon Blast, which is an egg move, Bug Buzz, which is a level up move, and then you can go with pretty much anything you want, whether you want Hidden Power Ground, Roost, Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball, there's a plethora of moves that Rybombi can get in order to make it effective, and I also like having Max Speed, Max Special Attack on my Rybombi. For Oricorio, however, I strongly think that Life Orb is the best possible set that you can put on Oricorio, just so you can hit as hard as possible once you copy those stat boosts, of course with the ability Dancer, and for the four moves, I would always suggest Revelation Dance, which if you don't know what that does, it is a signature move to Oricorio, which changes its typing depending on the style of Oricorio that you are, Air Slash, Hidden Power Ice, and Protect. I think Protect is a very key move in doubles that almost every single Pokemon needs. For the style of uh, Oricorio that you can use, you can use any one that you want, however I find the most success with Oricorio Pom Pom, which is the flying and electric type. I also think that having max speed max special attack on this mon is the best possible spread you can use. Both of these Pokemon are fairly simple to obtain, you can actually get a Rebombi by leveling up a Cutie Fly to level 25. And Oricorio, of course, is the final evolution, as is a single stage mon. Both of these can actually be found in the Melee Melee Meadow on Melee Melee Island, or in other words, the first island. So go to that spot, catch both of these mons, and you are ready to start your training. Alright, and moving along into my first pair that I've got here, I'm actually going to start off with Pelipper. Um, you can actually get a Pelipper by evolving a Wingle at level 25, and Wingle can actually be found on Route 1 to start the game. Now what you are going to want to do is make sure that the Wingle that you capture has the Hydration ability because when it evolves at level 25 it will gain Drizzle. If you don't know what Drizzle does, it's basically um, a free Rain Dance. The moment your Pokemon goes into battle, the rain will start. This is very important because the moves we are going to be running on this is Hurricane to start, which if you don't know about Hurricane, it is an incredibly powerful flying type move. But the gimmick behind it is the fact that this 110 base power special attack move is only 70% accurate normally, but in the rain it is 100% accurate. So you are going to wreck face with this. On top of that we have Scald. Um, if you wanted to run a different water move you can. I prefer Scald personally just because you get the 30% chance to burn. I, I do also have Ice Beam as well and I have Roost for recovery. Now, as far as the item, I just simply went with the Damp Rock, um, just because that way you can get the most out of your rain as far as your turns go. Pelipper can be ran in multiple different ways. It can be ran defensively or offensively. Both are extremely effective. However, if you wanted to run it very offensive, you could run moves like Hydro Pump. It also has really cool utility moves like U-Turn and Tailwind to make sure that your team is extra fast as well. Pairing up here with Pelipper is actually going to be the first legendary that we've covered in this series and it is actually going to be Tapu Koko. Um, to obtain Tapu Koko, you simply defeat the Elite Four and um, the Champion, so it is post-game. Um, you will automatically have a cutscene that will take you to the Ruins of Conflict, which is on the first island, and um, you'll be able to catch it there. I do want to stress this, you can only catch this Pokemon one time, so the first time you fight it, it is okay to KO the Pokemon. And you can simply fight the Elite Four and then go back and fight it again because if you wanted to uh, make sure that you got a certain nature or IVs or something, that's very important to keep in mind. 
this Pokemon does have the Electric Surge ability, which um, is going to power up Electric type move. On top of that, the first move that we're going to run is actually Thunder. Now, Thunder is just like Hurricane because what it does is it is only 70% accurate normally, but in the rain, it never misses. So you're going to have a Stab Electric Terrain never missing 110 base power move to just spam if you if you must um another move that um kelly and i have found great would be dazzling gleam um, because it is fairy type stab as well um as, with uh some some great power there uh, we also found grass knot to be very helpful um because it does take care of some of those pesky heavy mons and then for your fourth move, um, you could always run Protect, but if you did want to soft reset or make sure that you got a specific Tapu Koko, I personally have Hidden Power Fire on mine. Um, so that way, if you wanted to alternate between Protect and Hidden Power, you definitely can. Um, as far as the item goes for this, personally I'm running a Life Orb, but this Pokemon is so good and it will be good with pretty much almost any item you wanted to use. You could use a berry, you could use like a, a choice scarf or something. I personally went with life orb just so that way you could go through all of your moves equally. If you're running hidden power instead of protect, you could even use assault vest. But um, yeah, go ahead and take it away, Kelly, with the next one. The third pair that I kind of want to go over for you guys is for people that do not like offense and they prefer a bulkier play style and they aren't in a huge rush to battle through the entire battle tree and they just kind of want to try some fun stuff. And this set is actually going to be the set of Puku Muku and Mudsdale. Now I want to stress, this does have a massive weakness to grass, so make sure with the Pokemon that you bring along with these, they are resistant to grass. That is the most important thing in the entire world for this pair. However, with Pukamuku, uh, I think that the best item you can run with it is Leftovers with the ability Unaware. It is its hidden ability, so you are going to have to chain for that. However, it means that no matter how much your opponent sets up, they're going to be, it's like they're never going to get those stat boosts and you can always do whatever you need to and it's never going to boost up. For the moves, I think Soak, Toxic, Recover, and Protect are the best moves ever for this thing. Soak changes every single Pokemon into a water type, so even poison types can be toxic and you can toxic stall them with Soak, Toxic, and Recover, and then Protect just to gain some extra, um toxic damage on them. For the spread, you can either go especially defensive or physically defensive and just live forever and be absolutely annoying to the computer. For Mudsdale, I think Mudsdale is a really good pairing just because every single electric type that wants to threaten Pukamuku, Mudsdale just laughs at it and says, nah bruh. I think the best item that you can use with Mudsdale is actually Assault Vest. It, gain, it boosts its special defense with its already base 100 uh, HP. And with the ability Stamina, you're going to be boosting up your physical defense as it already is, so you're just going to be fat all the way around. I think that the best EV spread for it is going to be max HP, max attack with an adamant nature with the moves High Horsepower, Rock Slide, Close Combat, and Heavy Slam. High Horsepower, it's pretty much Earthquake, just a little bit weaker, and it hits one target. Rock Slide is a very powerful Rock type move, Close Combat is a very powerful Fighting type move, and Heavy Slam is a very powerful Steel type move. So you can hit a lot of stuff extremely hard while Pukumuku just sits there and is fat and annoying for the entire game. Alright, now to obtain a Mudsdale, you can simply evolve a Mudbray at level 30. Mudbray can be found on Route 4 on the Akala Island or the second island in the game. As far as Pukumuku, it is a 20% encounter rate while surfing on Route 7 on the Akala Island, so make sure um, to go ahead, hop on your Lapras, and pick one of those up. Now moving into the last set here, I have some version exclusives for you so this one will uh, require the help of a friend or the GTS or maybe you're lucky enough and you have both games and uh, you can just trade with yourself but the first one is actually going to be Alolan Ninetales to get Alolan Ninetales um, you can evolve your Vulpix with an Ice Stone and that can actually be found at Tapu Village or Mount uh, Lanakila on the third island now what you're going to do to get your Vulpix is make sure that you're going to SOS encounters until you find the hidden ability, which is Snow Warning. You'll know that you found the right one because the hail will just start happening automatically. So once you see that, you're good to go. As far as moves go for this, we're going to go with Blizzard um, because just like before with Thunder and Hurricane, Blizzard has 100% accuracy in hail. So this is something that will be benefited from hail. It's also going to be stabbed for Ninetales, so this is going to be very good. Ninetales does also obtain Moonblast, which is a powerful stab move. However, you will have to breed for that um, and get it through an egg, which is fine. But for the third move here, this is one that is very important and should not be overlooked. It is Aurora Veil. Now, Aurora Veil, basically what this is, 
is light screen and reflect combined. They did the fusion ha, they are together, they're one and the same, and this only works during hail but you're going to set up the hail automatically with your ability. So you can straight up hit this on turn one and all attacks that come at you, special, physical, it doesn't matter, they're going to be halved. Now for your fourth move, um, you do always have the option of protect, like we've mentioned before, but Ninetales does get some other good moves like extra sensory and even energy ball, as well as hidden power if you guys are into breeding and wanted to go for hidden power. It also gets the move nasty plot if you wanted to try to set up and sweep your opponent with blizzards. Now to pair along with Ninetales is the Pokemon Moon version exclusive, which is actually going to be Alolan Sandslash. So Ninetales is for Sun, Sandslash is for Moon. You can actually get it in the same location, and it does also evolve from a Sandshrew with the Ice Stone. Now you are once again going to want to do SOS encounters to make sure you get a hidden ability Sandshrew because this ability is Slush Rush. Now what Slush Rush does is in the hail, it doubles your speed. So it's basically Swift Swim in the hail. Now, this Pokemon is very rewarding if you can get, but there are a few loops you'll have to go through to obtain uh, the proper moveset. You will need a hard skill to get Icicle Crash, but it is a very powerful stab ice type move that will help you out. And um, you will need to make sure that you get your Sandshrew to at least level 30 before evolving it so that way it can learn Iron Head. Um, so that way you'll have both of your stab moves, you'll be good to go. Now, it always, is always good to set up with this mod, and it actually obtains Swords Dance through TM, so I definitely threw Swords Dance on my Sand Slash to help out. And uh, for the fourth move, once again, you do have the option to protect, um, but some other good options um, would be Earthquake, um, or maybe even Brick Break. It does also get Poison Jab and uh, Leech Life, which is has a major buff in Gen 7. Uh, for the item... I simply put a life orb on this guy, but um, really, I mean, it is up to you what you wanted to go through um, as far as your item goes to suit your playstyle the best. Um, simply, life orb just helped me out, just delivering max damage and making the timeline a bit quicker to advance through the battles. If you guys are wondering why you would run Protect on any Mon in doubles, because it's very easy to predict what your opponent is going to do and what they're going to attack. So if you can protect a Mon, you get an extra turn of living, and that means you can hit them on the next turn when they can't protect, and you might be able to get off a couple extra kills, or even win the game because of it. Well guys, that is all that we have for you for trying to beat the battle tree in the doubles format. I hope you all did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like before you leave. Also, make sure you go down to the description, find Kyle Lay's channel, go over there, watch the other video we did, hit subscribe, give him a like for me, and let him know that you came from this video. Thank you once again for having me on the channel here, and it was a blast doing these videos with you. We will definitely have more content in the future. Please subscribe to both channels if you can thumbs up the video and let us know if there's anything else that you would like to see covered or maybe um, another format or something like that and be easy everybody peace bye bye